let's see. It all started. Yeah, where did it all start? Here at the shrinks? No, no, a long time before that. I mean, everything went so fast, it's difficult to... Okay, okay, if I can't remember where, let's try when. If I'm really honest, and that is why I'm out here pouring out my soul, I guess it began way back in the 70s. Mm. I should have seen it coming. I mean, nothing that good lasts forever. Although you always want it to. Yeah, I shouldn't have waited so long to come here. I mean, let's face it. I was going cup of soup crazy. I had been working for Unilever in Holland on cup of soup. A lot of people don't realize it, but cup of soup has been around for a long time. A nice job in those days. Yep, those were the good old times. Nothing changed, every day the same, every year the same sales results, no new campaigns, no new ideas. <laughs> Absolute heaven. Well, we did make some changes. The first 10 years, we improved the quality. But after that, things stayed pretty much the same. You see, we had a different system then. Product management. You can look back and criticize it now, but in those days, everyone was doing it. And in one way, it worked. In those days, distribution went via the supermarkets. It was all about new ranges, new tastes, new products. The more, the merrier. And in terms of selling the stuff, no problem. A nice little TV commercial here, a radio promo there, as simple as that. Then there was the dream of every red-blooded American male. Compartmentalization. Huh. That really kept people off your back. It meant that marketing did marketing, sales did sales, and so on and so on down the line. Well, you stuck to what you knew best. At least that's what you told the others. And they couldn't challenge you. Sorry, guys, you just don't understand marketing, or whatever. It worked every time. Successful? Sure we were. You measured success in terms of your market share compared to your competitors in the same range of products. And if you came out in the lead, you were successful. It didn't matter how small you were ahead. I mean, a lead is a lead, isn't it? If only things could have stayed as they were. I mean, we were doing all right, but no. Along comes some bright marketing wizard with an idea, <laughs> a big idea. Cup of soup had to be positioned as a snack rather than a soup. A snack that could compete with coffee and tea. A snack to keep you sharp and alert through the day. A snack with presence in all the relevant channels, in home and out of home. The big boys had been doing it for ages, but we'd fallen asleep on the job. I didn't realize it at the time, but this out of home was going to change cup of soup and my life forever. People were being told to take better care of themselves. Work was becoming too stressful. The stress of success. We should take more breaks. But during a break, who wants to be pouring even more adrenaline-pumping, caffeine-loaded coffee down their throats? And soup isn't as addictive as a double cafe au lait with cream to go. So let's get soup out of the home and into other places, they said. Like the office. And then, the clever boys hit us with the second whammy. Integrated business. 
Oh, boy. If I had known then what I know now, I probably would have bailed out right there. But, as my old daddy used to say, If we all had perfect hindsight, then none of us wouldn't got married in the first place. My father was a hillbilly. Now we had to use all the relevant channels to take cup of soup to the consumer. In offices, factories, schools, hospitals. Talk about out of home. <laughs> We took over the whole country. Of course, this didn't happen just by chance. Oh no. As I explained to the shrink, it was all the result of integrated business. And while it may have looked complicated, somebody sure knew what he was talking about. You see, now we were all in dedicated teams. No more hiding away in our so-called specialist disciplines. We mixed them all together. As a result, we were all singing from the same song sheet, reading from the same page. We had all our ducks in a row, or rather, should I say, cups in a row. In other words, we were a multidisciplinary, dedicated team. I was so involved by now that even the kids on the block were calling me Crazy Mr. Cup of Soup, Crazy Mr. Cup of Soup. But I didn't care. We concentrated all our efforts on innovation. Innovation to get cup of soup to the customer. Innovation to improve the quality. Innovation in communication. We also went for massive visibility. Boy. No one, not even the bright boys at head office, ever expected the kind of success that we achieved. I mean, now we're really talking about a crazy cup of soup campaign. We hit all the relevant channels to reach our potential customers. TV, radio, events, direct marketing, PR, everything. The internet, too, became an important channel to communicate our message and to generate leads for new Cup of Soup customers. And that's when Cup of Soup really did take off. And by take off, I really do mean take off! Result? Turnover and profits doubled in three years, with servings rising from 130 to 250 million in the same period. Because now we measure success in consumption and frequency of use, and not in market share. Now we were in with the big boys in the snack and impulse market. I also just couldn't wait to tell the shrink about our interactive communication play. I mean, it was a brilliant idea. Think about it. If people wanted cup of soup in the office and the boss was being resistant, then there was only one solution. A cup of soup strike! Order your cup of soup strikers package from the website. 
Switch off your word processors at 4 p.m. on April the 4th, and then demand, we want cup of soup. Boy, is that crazy, or is that crazy? Now we have plans to double turnover again in the next three years. <laughs> in fact, we intend to make a daily habit out of cup of soup. And then it suddenly hit me. Didn't the doc get it? I've been missing the real cup of soup message all along. The secret was in the cup of soup strikers campaign. <laughs> yeah, we can take cup of soup much farther. I mean, we workers of the union, we gotta, we gotta unite ourselves and motivate. At four o'clock, all we need is cup of soup. No coffee, no tea, cup of soup. No more bad bosses launching us into the ceiling like those adverts. Yeah, we can form a cup of soup political party. Cup of soupers of the world unite. You have nothing to lose but your coffee dispensers. Yes, cup of soup today, Holland. Wait, I'm not finished. Listen to me, doctor. Today, Holland, tomorrow, Europe, and then and then the world. No, 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 today, the world, and then Holland, and then Europe. Uh, no, wait, the first Europe, and then Holland, and then the world, then, then the universe, and after the universe, the galaxy. Let me go. I'm not finished yet. I have one more thing to say. <laughs> Cup of Supers of the World Unite! Uh, political party! Yes! Today! I'll be back! I'll be back! <laughs>